and uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about an uh, important concept for the so-called polymer binder that we add into the ceramic paste or ceramic slurry two points one is so-called a melting temperature melting point or tm the other one we call tg or glass transition temperature okay melting temperature as we said tm is the transition temperature between what for crystalline material temperature would be phase transition between read to yourself free flowing liquid it's a liquid but also free flowing let's think of water above zero degree c the viscosity is pretty low pretty low free flowing almost right and the crystalline solid below zero degree c the water exists typically under standard pressure as a crystalline solid which is ice right that's melting temperature for crystalline material okay and then glass transition temperature glass transition temperature is typically for material that can form glass and the glass transition temperature is also a transition temperature between now read to yourself highly viscous liquid highly viscous liquid and the transition into what rigid glassy solid rigid means the material is like a glass like a typical glass brittle right glassy it means brittle it also means it is non-crystalline it means it's amorphous the atoms or molecule packed in them are not in translational periodicity okay so that's a glass in uh, glass transition temperature accompanied by a sudden change in other physical chemical properties that's a glass transition temperature for example density here we show a plot that i borrowed from callister's textbook on material science engineering the horizontal axis would be temperature of course generally as we plot the left side is lower temperature the right side is higher temperature the vertical axis i call it specific volume which means volume of the material per unit uh, mass or weight which is essentially the inverse of so-called density make sense so the vertical axis is specific volume or we call it inverse density okay then let's follow this graph a little bit let's first look at uh, when we are at a high temperature about what about what tm melting temperature so above tm for a typical crystalline material if it is above melting temperature like here the material exists what as a liquid not only liquid we say quite often free flowing liquid right free flowing very low viscosity if you handle liquid water of course free flowing liquid organic solvent quite often free flowing most of them uh, except those very large molecule ones and then liquid metal any of you ever handle liquid metal well if you have mercury it flows what pretty fast right of course it beats up but uh, if it's not beat up you find it free flows very fluidly and if you ever see people pour liquid aluminum it also free flows very fast liquid lead liquid aluminum solder those stuff flow free flows very fast okay above the melting temperature the material is free flowing liquid of course now crystalline and then as we decrease temperature as we decrease temperature for most material other than ice for most material as we decrease temperature typically specific volume goes down or put it the other way the density goes higher that's for most material water is an exception below uh, around its freezing temperature water is an exception but most other material as you cool down it gets denser and denser make sense all the spe specific volume gets smaller and smaller make sense and then when you go at uh, the tm 
this free flowing liquid, if you give it enough time for the atoms to arrange, what would happen? It would go along this dashed line, have a sudden change in what? So-called specific volume or a sudden change in density, and then becomes what? Now I'm here, becomes so-called crystalline solid. Make sense? That's for most material, for metals or crystalline material. At TM, we would go through a sudden change in quite often in density or specific volume. In most cases, the material in solid is denser. Ice, again, water is an exception. Most other material are getting denser as you go from liquid to solid. And then, when you are below the melting temperature, the lower the temperature, the further left I move along this blue line, the material is getting also getting what? Lower and lower temperature, the material is getting more and more dense, right? Denser, are you say? Or put it the other way, the specific volume become lower and lower, which means per unit weight, the volume become less and less. That's what you expect, right? Thermal expansion back this way, going lower temperature. Make sense? That's for most material. But then, if we do not go along this dashed line to become crystalline, if for certain material, liquid, if we cool, but we cool relatively fast, we do not give it enough time for the material, for the atoms to arrange in periodical fashion, then we can so-called undercool the material. Below what? I'm still on this red line, but I'm now what? Below the melting temperature, I'm still following the same density trend or specific volume trend, which means I'm still behaving like a liquid, but because I'm now already below my melting temperature, my viscosity will be higher makes sense the highest think of just the uh, honey the lower the temperature you go or peach the higher the viscosity similar if i have i will handle glass the lower the temperature the higher the viscosity that's quite often just linked to the material they have large molecules or complex structure makes sense think of glass think of large molecules okay and then, but it still kind of follows this trend. We cool the liquid below its melting temperature, and it's getting, still getting what? In terms of density, getting higher and higher, at the same time getting more and more whiskers. Make sense? But we are below the melting temperature. The reason we can achieve this for twofold, one is we are cooling relatively fast for this particular material. The other one, the material quite often, the structure is relatively complex. The molecules are relatively large. It's difficult to cool water do this. Okay. And then at a certain temperature, at a certain temperature, it cannot go indefinitely as this whisker state. It would at Tg, a certain point, it would go through a sudden change. That the liquid would suddenly lose all its flow capability. It would transition from a highly viscous, undercooled liquid into a solid, rigid, brittle, amorphous glass. Make sense? Now let's think a little bit. At this Tg, glass transition temperature, above it, it's still a liquid. But because it's below the melting point, it's a highly viscous, quite often we say undercooled liquid. And then going through, going through this, we're going to change to a different slope, which means we're going to change suddenly. And here, we are below the Tg, now we lose all the flow capability. It no longer flows. The glass, room temperature, does it flow? You drip it, it's not, no longer going to drip at all, right? Now becomes a rigid, right? Means hard, 
brittle means you can it doesn't have much toughness doesn't have plastic deformation you apply stress it's going to shatter right rigid brittle and then we say glassy or amorphous the material there are crystalline material that are brittle but this glass material is whether it's polymer or glass they are still amorphous okay so that's the transition between these two states okay and then in most material tg would be compared with tm lower because it's only half you cool it below the melting temperature you can make the liquid more viscous compared with the free flowing liquid make sense so most cases tg would be lower than tm okay and that's kind of the two extreme case one is sudden change in density but for glass there would not be a sudden change in density do you see that from here from this viscous liquid to rigid brittle glass there's no sudden change in density or specific volume it's continuous you see that the slope what changes right and suppose from liquid to crystalline not only the slope changes i also have a discontinuity in what from here to here i have a discontinuity in so-called specific volume or put it another way discontinuity in density make sense so that's a two extreme case and then for many polymers the many of the polymer bundles we're going to have something follow the green line something in between because most polymers believe it or not they are even in the solid state they are so-called read to yourself semi-crystalline which means what roughly half crystalline the other half what amorphous or glassy make sense so as a result when you cool most polymer it would uh, not exactly behave like crystalline not exactly behave like a pure glass somewhere in between there will be some glassy sorry crystalline portion and there will also be some amorphous or glassy portion make sense that's for most uh, plastic material okay and uh, we said most cases tm is greater than tg or tg is smaller than tm and if the tg is too high above room temperature for your bundle that you used if your tg is too high much higher than room temperature then your bundle behaves like what your bundle polymer in your ceramic paste behaves like a if the TG is much higher than room temperature, which means at room temperature, where are we on this curve? Kind of here or here, right? So your polymer behave like a glass, then can you easily shape it? No, right? Because your polymer behave like a glass. You apply stress, your polymer what? Fracture, then you cannot plastically shape it. So this is the means your polymer you either have to choose a different bundle or you have to add something we just mentioned the so-called plasticizer to reduce the tg to make the polymer more plastic more softer make sense okay, okay.